Teaching, Nouwen says, means the commitment to provide the fearless space where questions can come to consciousness and can be responded to, not by prefab answers, by, but by an articulate encouragement to enter them seriously and personally. You see, what a spiritual teacher does, and I'm not just talking about a guru on the mountaintop, I'm talking about a person who is spiritual and who teaches, and that's all of us, potentially, all of us. What a spiritual teacher does is use two very important gifts, revelation and affirmation. The spiritual teacher says, I know that there's gifts inside of you waiting to be expressed. And the spiritual teacher is not afraid to talk about their own gifts. So there's self-disclosure that happens, which is, you know, tricky business for us adults. We don't always feel safe revealing ourselves. And the spiritual teacher affirms who the, who the student is. You know, kids are so used to, I don't know if this has always been true, I think I talked to a teacher last week about this, that sometimes kids mouth off and in my day, <laughs> if I mouthed off, um, I'd be in trouble for a long time after that. If I mouthed off, you know what I'm saying, around a parent, around my mother in particular? If I mouthed off, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. Well, today it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different because p teachers are different and parents are different and we're helping kids discover themselves in a different way. We're helping them discover what works and what doesn't. The teacher gently lifts the veil that covers the student and helps the student come out of hiding, helps the student figure out what works and what doesn't, affirms the student. The third relationship is that of the professional and the client. You know, you can be a professional librarian, you can be a professional teacher or a professional salesperson or a professional retired person. What, what we're talking about is somebody who comes to us and asks for help. Somebody who comes to us and says, I'm kind of in a jam and I think you've got some wisdom and you could help me. This is another place where we can experience and share our hospitality because somebody comes in and they're lost. They're, you know, um, Carl Menninger, he was a famous psychiatrist who hails from Kansas, I might add. And Carl Menninger said that the most important gift, now tell me what you think about this. Why do you think the most important gift, um, what is the most important gift that a physician or a psychiatrist or a doctor can use with a patient? Anybody? Listening, okay. That's, that's probably a number one. Menninger said the most important gift is diagnosis. And here's what he said about that, is that people sometimes come in to a professional, not just a physician, with, you know, kind of a, an array of issues, problems, that they want to talk about, and they can't get clear about what they need to do with those problems. And somebody who can say, oh, is this, is this the thing that you wanted to talk about, just point their finger to it, can be such an incredible gift. That's a person with hospitality. And that's what manager was talking about. So <clears throat> it happened to me last week that a colleague called, excuse me, on the phone <clears throat> and had a tough situation, said to me, I've got this person, I'm pretty upset about it, I'm not sure what to do. And it, it kind of kept going for a while, and I was sitting in my car, and I kept thinking, I know what she wants, and then it would change. And then I'd think, no, no, that's it, and then it would change. And then finally I said, are you trying to figure out a way to talk to that person? Are you trying to figure out a way to have a communication with that person? He said, yeah, that's it. And see, that was just a little diagnosis. It, wa it wasn't a great skill thing, it was just I kind of got from her what it is she really needed. And so we had a, a really good conversation about how she was going to approach the person in need. So it's important that we remember, friends, that it's not just physicians who are healers. It's not just ministers. It's not just massage therapists. It's not just energy workers or, or some kind of therapists who are the healers, that potentially every human being is a healer. The healer is a student who is learning, and the patient is a teacher who wants to teach us something. 
Patients learn by telling their story, and if the healer or the professional can create a space of hospitality instead of hostility, then the person can unpack what it is they need to discover, what it is they need to talk about. So how do we develop enough space in this world, in our lives, where we're all, most of us are multitasking, we're on the phone, one if not more than two, more than one telephone. I mean, I was in a Home Depot the other day and the woman was making a phone call for me and then she picked up another phone. She had two phones on her ears and she was going like this, having conversations. And people do that while they're driving, right? And, and, right, that's a little bit scarier. <laughs> How do we develop enough space in our busy, multitasking kind of life and culture that we're accustomed to? Well, <clears throat> that's another paradox. We're receptive and we have boundaries. What kind of time do we have available when somebody comes to us? If we can express that to them, then we're not in danger of becoming hostile because they've overused us or because they've stayed too long at the fair. You know, somebody was telling me this morning, she's having a dinner party tonight, sometimes those people just stay too late. I said, well, tell them how long the dinner party is, you know? I mean, the dinner party, I'm, I'm happy to have you over, we're gonna have dinner and we'll probably be wrapped up around, you know, 10 minutes after you arrive. No, we'll probably, <laughs> we'll be wrapped up by, you know, at 7.30, 8 o'clock. What happens is if we don't express our boundaries, we circle around to a place of hostility. You see, isn't it just weird? In the very same circle is hospitality and hostility. The moment when we begin to feel taken advantage of, when we haven't expressed our own boundaries, then we begin to feel hostile. And we kind of check out. Our hostility means that we're not really available to a person, we're not really paying attention, we're not really listening, and then we're an empty heart. And an empty heart is not a welcoming heart. And an empty home is not a welcoming home. So we care for ourselves by taking time apart. I mean, you know, Jesus did it all the time. He was going off on boats. He was going up to mountaintops. He was going out to desert, right? He was really good at being restored and re re renewed by taking time apart. So we care for ourselves by releasing what was by not worrying about what will be. We care for ourselves by practicing beginner's mind, by not knowing. And in beginner's mind, we do not know what another person needs. We just can't know, we can't pretend to know. We don't know what their gifts are until they reveal them. We don't know the people until they reveal who they are. We practice the role of host by freeing up the space around us and we create a welcoming space in our own heart and life for the voice of God that comes through others. You see, every time we create a space for another person, both of us are gonna be healed. Both of us are going to be healed. And if we don't set boundaries, of course, that, that makes it more difficult. As we practice emptying our expectations and our assumptions, we find ourselves present in this moment with the person who's in front of us and the situation in front of us. This movement from hostility to hospitality is not about weakness or power or someone having more or less. It's a releasing of fear, a releasing of defensiveness and an opening to the other and to the world. As we move from hostility to hospitality with ourselves and with others, we continue to develop receptivity and we create a space immediately around us and in our world that is not only about God, but it is God. It's God who prompts us to practice hospitality in the world. So as you go about your day today, I mean really as soon as the service is over and you see your friends across the room and you wanna go visit with your friends and find out what happened this week, or today, I want to invite you to go up to somebody you don't know. 